Lauren, and welcome to a super special episode of Dr. Me First. Recently, I was away on respite in Taos, New Mexico with a fabulous friend, physician, and fellow coach, Dr. Dina George. While we were there, she talked me into podcasting, which honestly, she didn't have to do much talking to, but she shared the audio and I wanted to share it with you. It was such a special time that we had together and sitting back and reliving all those times and looking through the pictures have been super special this week. So join me in this conversation, get to know Dr. Dina George, and I want to encourage you to go on an adventure. Think about it. You need a little fresh air in your life. Before we get into the conversation, got to pay some bills. So here's a word from our sponsor. Deputy, at your practice, what happens when staff call out sick? How much time does it take to find a replacement to fill in? If you need to cancel appointments because you're short staff, what does that cost your practice? Well, Deputy is a simple app that helps more than 250,000 workplaces tackle this exact problem. Deputy makes it easy to schedule staff in line with patient demand, communicate schedules with your team, and instantly find replacement when someone calls out sick. To find more and to try Deputy for free, go to drpodcastnetwork.com backslash Deputy, D E P U T Y. Well, this is a treat to sit here with Erin Wiseman, like to physically sit here and be able to see her. And actually spend five days with her on the Taos adventure. And we thought we would share some reflections. So we're swinging the mic back and forth. And I joked with Dina earlier, I guess. And well, I guess I won't be talking over you (laughs) since we're sharing a mic. But yeah, it's been awesome. We spent the last part of August here in Taos. Man, just so many takeaways, don't you think? Just adventure on top of adventure each day. Yeah, it's funny we set these intentions without either of us having been here of what it might be like and what our goals were for the event. For me, it's adventure, like more time outdoors that we can spend the better. It is really hot and humid in Texas right now. So favorite activity today is the capstone event from our time here. How about for you? Well, I came in for this respite, as my word has been respite, is just a retreat away relaxation, just a pause from what's been going on. And it has been that. Man, we have done a lot of things. (laughs) And the diversity of Taos as well. I mean, from when we met in the Dallas airport, like we knew it was going to be fun. And we just kept saying like, what's our next adventure? What does enchantment look like? Because the license plates here in New Mexico have the land of enchantment on it. I think my favorite has been the capstone hike today that we did. Why don't you tell the people a little bit about it? Well, first, I'm going to talk about the first night we were here in this house. We are in a VRBO, and it is exquisite. It's right next to the historic aspect of Taos. And the first night, we were in the hot tub, and we could hear some rustling around of leaves outside the hot tub. It's dark. And just curious about what it could be. We're in a town. So it's not like we're out in the country and we listened, it would go away. We listened, it would go away. And then Aaron looks over and says, it's a skunk. (laughs) Of course it's a skunk. And the next part is the best when she says, all right, I'm going to grab the pool stick. You get out, go inside. I gotcha. I gotcha cover. (laughs) So we safely made it back indoors from the skunk. And she even went outside and covered the hot tub again without getting sprayed. And when we contacted the owner, she said, you know, we've had more skunks this year. (laughs) That is the country girl coming out in me for sure. But yeah, so we did that. You know, it was great being here with you, Dina, because we had said it at the very beginning as we were planning this, that we're very both just open. Like you do you, I'll do me. We'll meet in the middle. And because the home that we got, we really wanted to fill it with other women. We have all this space and it was great to have our own bathrooms and our own sleeping areas and like could do whatever. But it's been so nice to like get up in the morning and be like, what do you want to do today? And it's like, well, I don't know. Let's look at the map or let's look at the travel guides. And 
you got to attend a really cool church service on Sunday. I went and hiked. We went for a little hike. We ate great food. The next day, we did a little bit more hiking. We got on the Rio Grande River with a guide and then the capstone today. So the capstone started out as, what do you want to do today? I don't know. I think I want to go get coffee. And then we met back a few hours later and decided that outdoors and going for a hike, there are so many trails around here that are fantastic. And we met a couple on one of the trails a couple of days ago who said they went down the Long Canyon Trail and really enjoyed it. And so that stuck in my mind. I was like, okay, if they liked it so much, why don't we do that? The Long Canyon Trail is accessed through Taos Ski Valley. And it turns out it connects to some other trails. And so you can create a loop out of it. And I wasn't really paying attention to how far things were. I knew it was the 0.9 miles up to the Long Canyon Trail. And that was like a three-mile trail that we could take. And then there's another one that you could take around. And it just all seemed like a good idea. Yeah, it did. So I'm the map girl. Like when we first got here, I even bought a physical map, topographical map. One, because I love to take them home and put them on my wall. But two, like I physically use them on the trails. And I was like, this is going to be a hike. And I told Tina, I was like, we're going to climb about 2,800 feet today. This is going to be a hike. And I didn't add up all the mileage because I was like, if we can just get to the top, we can always turn around and hike back. You know, we can do it in and out. We don't have to do the whole loop. And it was tough. So we started at around 9,000 some odd feet and the top of the ridge, the summit we were trying to get to was like 11,500. And so we get going and we get started and we felt good and we did something different. So I guess we'll go ahead and start reflections from the trail. So reflection number one for me was this hike was so successful today because we kept checking in with each other and ourselves. And I was calling it like a system analysis, like, all right, starting at your feet, like all systems go. Are we good? And we felt really good for the first couple miles, for the first couple miles. And then we got to the part of the trail when your brain really starts to be a dick. Really bad. You're going to have to bleep me, Dina. Just mean. Like my brain was all like, why did you do this to Dina? This is really hard. You're probably not going to be able to finish this. And then my left butt cheek started burning. I mean, it's seriously like ascending how many flights of stairs? Like over hundreds. Yeah. And then my brain was being mean. It was like, see, your body can't even do this. You need to stop. And I have to say, thank God that I had a wonderful partner on this trail because we would rest. We would drink some water, some electrolytes, have a little snack. And when it got really bad, she was like, Okay, how about some music? (laughs) And so tell us the playlist that got us through. It started with Europe, the final countdown. (laughs) We were singing it and then we had cell reception. So we got on YouTube and we could watch the video, although we didn't, but it hummed us through five minutes. And then we listened to Queen. Another one bites the dust because every step we took, we were like, that's one step closer. That one bites the dust. We're going to keep going. We had some Madonna, Red Hot Chili Peppers, and then we started with Breathe, Raise Your Hands to Heaven, right as we were at the summit, I think. And it was like opening and clearing. And we lost cell reception, which was fine because we were literally at the highest point. The coolest thing with that nature is there was a gate in the middle of freaking nowhere. I'll try not to drop F-bombs, Dina. And so we just started celebrating the gate (laughs) because like, At that point, it was just how much we were like four miles in at that point. And it was rough. I mean, it was that rough ascension up there. We had got trekking poles. Dina had gotten new boots. So like we were well equipped. It was not just physically taxing. It was mentally taxing. And then we hit the ridge where it was flat. It was like dancing on clouds. There was a section that was so flat. I was like, this is where we strut. (laughs) It felt so good compared to all of the uphill that we had done. And we met a gentleman and his dog probably a mile or so back who said there's a gate up there. And so I just kept thinking, okay, I wonder where the gate is and is that the highest point? The gate, it was nice to be there because it was this marker like we made it. I wanted a big sign. And when we go back, 
I'm going to take a sign and staple it to the gate that says, you made it. Rock on. (laughs) It's a huge accomplishment to go through the gate to the other side. It's like you're entering another aspect of the trail. So one of the takeaways, the reflections is celebrate the gate. Whatever you're enduring, whatever you're challenging yourself to do, whatever goal that you have set, you don't know when you're going to be there. Like when you're doing something you've never done before, and that's exactly what today was, you don't know when you're going to be there. And you don't know what it's going to be like, but you can all along the way celebrate the gate. Yeah, 100% that. Because right before the gate was the point that I was ready to turn back, to be perfectly honest. And we even said, oh my gosh, how much is like life and practice and business and so many aspects of life where like you're going and you're like, okay, when we get there, when we get there, and you just walk right past it. When we hit the gate, we thought it was something important, but we really didn't know if it was the summit point or if it was, okay, now you've got another half mile to go. It wasn't until after we went past the gate that then we were actually able to celebrate it because we were like, oh my gosh, we're not climbing upstairs anymore like we were doing. And so I think that's a reflection that I'm taking away is like sometimes you hit those milestones like you didn't even know it happened, but to almost go back and say okay, that was an important moment. We need to take a pause here and pop some bubbly and really celebrate the moment. Definitely a reflection point for me. What about you? What's some other reflections? We had the beauty of water being next to us on some of the path. And I think a lot about how being in flow with life, being in flow with business is so important. And the water always finds the way. It always finds the way down. It always finds the way to to keep moving. And if I just look at my life like that, just keep moving. I'll find the way. Keep believing. Because so much of what we do as entrepreneurs is we think and we believe, but we cannot yet see it because that's the definition of entrepreneurship, creating something that doesn't exist. And so holding on to that, the water finds the way. I can find the way. And in all of our lives, whoever is listening to this, you found the way so many times. Even if you didn't think you could, even if you didn't know how, even if it didn't turn out the way you wanted to, you found a way. And I'm going to take away just thinking of any decision point or how I want to move or maneuver or work with my clients to be that water that is flowing and finding the way. Another thing you talked about with water when we got off the Rio Grande yesterday was when the guide pointed out. So it's lower water levels right now because it's summer and they get a lot of snow melt in in the spring, but they also have a lot of spring fed water as well. So it still flows. But you talked about yesterday and those areas like where the algae was growing and how it was getting stagnant. Talk a little bit about that. Yeah, as high achievers, so much of what we do is like we hustle and we work hard and we learn and we keep moving and growing. So med school and residency and attending. At least the early part of being an attending, there's a lot of flow, a lot of movement. It's like water that's coming down rapidly. And then what happens is at some point that flow slows down. I think it's that we stop growing. We stop being in environments that are stimulating. And we also start working in environments that are metric driven rather than core value driven, rather than mission driven with a greater purpose. And what happens is that we can just become stagnant. And in the Rio Grande, in the areas that were stagnant, there was a lot of growth of algae. The water looked different in those areas compared to where it was flowing. And so in my mind, it's like a high achievers do better when there is that flow, when there is that movement, when there's that learning, that growth, and the contribution is what makes a difference. Stagnant is what, for many of us, we start thinking, we got to get out of medicine. This isn't working anymore. Thinking that it's medicine in general rather than the environment that we're in that's contributing. What are your thoughts? I agree. When you told me that yesterday, I I thought, yeah, it makes so much sense. Like you need to get back into the flow. You need to get back into the current. No matter if it's going to like beat you up against a rock, just getting out of that place. And sometimes that's just small hops, little pivots, not the big throw yourself out of your profession and try something else, which isn't a horrible thing. Having got out and then got back in, I can totally attest to it. But yeah, staying the stagnation just leads to like nasty, stinky pond weed. So definitely not a good thing. One reflection as I was sitting here thinking while you were talking about the water was 
this capstone day today, we did nine miles, 2,800 feet of altitude. There was no way that I would have completed this if it wasn't for community, if it wasn't for you being there. And I translate that over into my own life. I mean, how many times have I, when things get rough or like stuff's not going good with work or business or family or whatever, how many times do I shell down and isolate like to self-protect when in fact the exact opposite is needed? And I think transitioning through a different phase of COVID, I think it's really shown what relationships are vital and vibrant and what maybe need to go away, but then also showed me like, being vulnerable and opening up and having worked so hard to make the connections with people and then not to use those connections whenever I'm struggling or down or shit happens in life. Like not opening that up is a detriment to myself. And I think one of my reflections moving forward is just to continue to know that there are so many people that have my back. Why not use that support system? It was fascinating because the times that I wasn't feeling good on the trail, Erin was feeling great talkative, lively. And the times that she wasn't feeling so good are the times that I was more talkative or we brought out the music to, to keep going. I think it was reassuring. I know it was for me. Reassure the other that we're going to keep going forward. Whether the steps are six inch steps or 12 inch steps, it doesn't really matter because forward is forward. And because the intention is to have an experience. At the end of it, it was so exciting to see the car again and to say that we did it. We did it. Yeah, I kept saying forward is the pace, you know, because your watch stopped, what, the last two, two and a half miles? So we didn't even get it charted, but it still counts. It still effing counts. But that we just kept saying, like, forward is the pace. Because my brain always wants to calculate and be like, okay, we're doing two miles an hour. or We're doing a mile and a half an hour. And some of those places, there was no way. There was no way we were going to make the pace that we wanted to. But I remember also saying at one point, like, we have all the time to get this done. Like, we will get this done. Even if it is right at sunset, we are going to get this done. And so, yeah, forward is the pace. Translating that into life. Some days you are jumping out of bed, kicking ass, taking names. And then other days it is your ass that is getting kicked. And so reminding myself that forward is the pace. And some days it's just good enough to get my kids to school and brush my teeth. But that is forward and that is the pace. The other thing is that we really had to take very good care of ourselves on the trail. We couldn't skip water. We couldn't skip electrolytes. We couldn't skip food, even if we didn't feel hungry or thirsty, because those were the essential ingredients to keep going. <laughs> I had a rock in my boot. We had to pause. We did a lot of pausing. Not necessarily to eat or drink fluids, but we did pausing to just slow our breathing down and to take a look around. Because I don't know that we would have looked around as much if we hadn't paused to find that one clearing. We found this outstanding clearing. You want to talk about it? So after we got to the top and we were starting to make our descent back down, we stopped because I was breathing hard and I felt my heart rate in my ears. And then I said, Dina, look over there. It looks like the sound of music. <laughs> the hills are alive kind of thing. And so like, even though we were tired, I could already tell like my feet were swelling in my shoes and starting to get jello legs. We walked out into this clearing and probably took a good five or 10 pictures just to be there. And I think that's the big thing here in today versus the here in of seven, 10 years ago. Before, it would have been about how much mileage did we do? How fast did we get it done? Celebrate that. Whereas today's journey was like, we're going on an adventure and we're going to try to enjoy the entire time and we're going to just take it as it is and we're just going to see what happens. We saw people the first couple miles. We didn't see anyone for probably the next six miles. And then we saw a couple coming behind us and they were moving swiftly. They were pros. <laughs> and so it was fascinating to have that much section of open land to ourselves. There was no noise. It was just peaceful and quiet and the sky was blue and we were breathing. <laughs> and it was an excellent adventure. It's one thing to say, oh yeah, we could do that. And it's an entirely different thing to go and do it. Yeah, I think so. And one other reflection is I was a college athlete, super trains, all the things. And like now that I'm finding in this phase of life, 
I get super negative with my body because I have those past expectations of what it's supposed to be. And I remember you saying like on the trail, because you're training for a big race right now, like I'm in better shape than this. And it's like the mountain doesn't care. We still had to take those same steps as everyone else. And so translating that into life again and to our listeners out there is like, I don't care if you are 18 years old and your resting heart rate is 58 or 98. You have to all take the same steps. That was what was interesting because we even talked about it when we were hiking, just looking at different people and being like, oh, they look older than us, but they're faster than us. (laughs) But we don't know their journey. They maybe didn't do the whole nine miles. They maybe like walked two miles in and like waddled and played in the stream for the rest of the day. Not comparing that and just being in all now sitting here tonight in the house of we did that. Every step of that, my body did that. So it doesn't matter how fast or slow or how powerful we did it. And your body's given birth to three dragons. So it's amazing. I see it a lot with physicians who have mastery and comfort in practicing medicine. And that's whether or not they practice medicine right now. And then when it comes to starting something new or doing something new, all the negativity comes out. It's never going to happen. Why isn't this easy? I don't even know. And that's similar to parts of our journey on this capstone event. The doubt, the lack of mastery, the ease of going into the comparison of what we used to be or what other people are doing. And it's getting back to that place of being intentional and selecting the thoughts to keep and allowing the other ones to flow by. And that's really empowerment is when you can see it and when you can grab what you want and you can let the rest just float by. Yeah, like setting a time on how quick we would do it, that we just floated that by. And how far we would go today, we really just floated it by and yet just had a marvelous journey. I'm so proud of us. (laughs) We set up an event We set the best of intentions. We did enough research and it has turned out beautifully. We invited others to be part of the experience. In fact, we worked really hard to sell this event and no takers. And it has been the most beautiful event. And I am a firm believer that things work out exactly the way they need to be. And I think this was the event that needed to be us taking care of and refreshing our souls. 100% agree with that. And You know, like we could have got down and we could have canceled or we could have said we failed. And instead, I remember that text thread. I was like, are you still in? And you're like, yeah, are you still in? And I was like, hell yes, we're still doing this. And so I would encourage people to like to shift the perspective. And if you couldn't get get in this year, think about next year or think about other things that you've been really craving in your life and get to it. I was telling Dina on the trail. You know, I've been doing this for quite a long time and specifically in my own growth and development, trying to get away from Indiana and trying to get away from the hustle and just create pockets of time of differences. And the first time I did it, it was awful. Like my brain, it kept looking for work to do, but it's no, we're here. We're here right now. This is like my seventh or eighth trip and it's finally like settling in. It's finally like okay, we can do this. Even though I did have my moments on the trail where I was like, you should be better at this. And overall, I would say 90% of the trip has definitely been what adventure and respite really means to me now. So I would encourage anybody out there to try to do it to if any of this activity sounds great to you or in the future, come hang out with us. Just know that it's not going to be 100%, but that's fine. You just start somewhere. You're not going to be the expert on the nine mile mountain climb trail. (laughs) We won't be either, but we're going to go back to that damn gate. I'm going to put a burnout to badass sticker on it too. I think that's a great idea. And I think whoever joins us, we are going to bring out the pom-poms and really celebrate being at the gate. Why the gate? Because it is a marker of progress. I think one last takeaway is for me, it's not judging the speed and not judging the size of the step. Forward is forward. A step is a step. Calling something slow or small or all that does is minimize. It's really about just one step after the next step, no matter if they're tiny steps. And some of them, when we were going down, were very tiny steps so that we could stay upright on the canyon ridge. And it doesn't matter. Progress is progress. I agree, friend. Well, we better get off here so that we can catch a flight home tomorrow. 
It's been great. Burnt Out to Badass, Dr. Erin Wiseman. If any of you have the opportunity to spend time with her, it is truly a joy. Hey, are you tired of going at it alone? Well, friend, you don't have to anymore. Come sit with me. I want you to know that it's okay if you need to take a break. It's okay if you need to talk about some real crappy things. It's okay. You're not the first to feel like this, and you don't have to stick it out and be miserable. There is a way out, and there's a whole movement of fierce females in your corner. If you want to come sit with me and be in my community, you will not see me in Facebook groups. I freaking hate Facebook with a deep and fiery passion. (laughs) But what you can do is come over to Aaron Wiseman's Badass Collective on Slack. Because guess what? Once a badass, always a badass. And this isn't anything that's paid. It's not anything that I'm like throwing huge promos at you. It is simply a community where I am trying to get people together in the same space so that we can have these kind of conversations safely and in a protected manner that you feel so loved on. It's the whole purpose. So click in the show notes, get over to the Slack group. We do have some community rules. But, you know, that's just how it goes. But I would love to see you in there. I am in there almost every single day having real conversations, posting crazy pictures of my kids and gifts, all that good stuff. And I want you in there, too. So come on over. Come sit with me. Hey, great show today. And before we end, here's a quick reminder about our sponsor. If you want to boost efficiency across your practice and make staffing scheduling easier, try the Deputy app. You can try this award-winning technology for free by going to drpodcastnetwork.com backslash deputy. That's drpodcastnetwork.com backslash deputy. Thanks again, Dina. It was great to join you on that trip. And thanks for your listeners for traveling through with me on my mini adventures. If you are looking for an adventure, it's not too late to travel to Southern Indiana doing my small badass outdoor retreat. It's going to be less than 10 people. We'll make sure everybody's vaccinated. We're going to do it healthy and well. It's the weekend of September 11th and 12th. So if you're interested, send me an email and we will get you all the information about how you too can have a little adventure in your life. So remember friends, in closing, Your life, your calling, your pulse matters.